All right, welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Hey, back by popular demand, the Mighty Mini three gallon pot reflux combination still by Mile High. And uh, we've carried this before, and we're gonna start carrying these again. Uh, so you can order these directly through milehigh.com, or you can order them through us. Again, this is one of those cases where, look, it doesn't matter. Um, the price is the same. You can order it through Mile High, or you can just give me a call and order it through us. So you're gonna pay the same thing. The only difference is you get me with it. Uh, you know, who knows? Hey, listen, this is, this is great because this is sort of like an upgraded model. So a lot of things have taken place over the development process. And uh, Mike up there at Mile High is doing a wonderful job with his team about trying to satisfy the needs and the desires of customers. Uh, so in this hobby, we've got a lot of, there's a lot of desire. And when you, try to, when you try to round out everything that everybody wants and you try to put it all together into one small happy package, it does become challenging. But, but they're getting to it. Now look, this thing comes, I've taken it out of the box. It comes in a small box, so it's all, it's all packaged in one box together. Um, these are the things that you receive in it. Of course, this is gonna be the stack. This is your, your column with your, uh, your reflux jacket and the condenser. And this is the reflux in and out. And then of course, this is your condenser in and out. So we'll get to that in just a second. This is wonderful, wonderful. The, the lid, the lid's got the neoprene seal and it's got the screen in the bottom so nothing falls back down. If you pack the column, nothing falls back down inside your kettle. Oh, there we go. There's the lid clamp. You get a bag of rashing rings. You also get a roll of copper and this is enough copper to last you for quite a while. And if you can recall one of the other videos we did that you, know, you, don't, you don't need a whole lot. Just a couple of rolls, and each roll is kind of equivalent to a plate. Remember, a plate's a physical thing. It's also a measurement and a reflux still. So uh, go back and watch one of the other videos. It, you'll, you'll see what we're talking about. And then all, here's all the hoses that are necessary to operate your pot reflux. Mighty mini. Now, you'll notice that it's got this large two inch uh yeah large two inch opening on one end of it and what that large two inch opening is for you get of course you get a hose connector another hose connector whether it's a male or female you get all the gaskets you need you get the digital thermometer the bung that goes in the top of the column uh the clamps for your column and for if you're going to use this on a, uh, let's say for instance, a tabletop cooker, or you're gonna use it on a new wave cooktop, which is probably about the largest I'd put on a new wave cooktop. If you're gonna use it on that, well then you'd wanna seal off this front port so that it doesn't leak. And it comes with this, which is just fastened. It, this is how you seal that off. It's fascinating. Uh, this is just a dead, clamp with a plate that goes on the outside of that and that seals off that port. Now what's interesting about this is that this port gives you so much more flexibility and we'll get to that. Here's the other clamp. You're going to get all the small clamps for all your hoses. You get a package of 48 hour turbo yeast to get you started and a pack of this turbo clear um, and i've talked about this turbo clear before this is an amazing product uh, highly recommended for anybody who's doing any kind of distilling um, that's another topic for another video <laughs> so we're going to put these clamps aside now with all of that and we're going to assemble this and the way this is assembled is relatively straightforward you know you'll pour your mash in and you've got your one port on the side that's already been closed off this goes on top. Now, remember folks, this does not take, you don't need a pair of pliers or a wrench to do this. There's a neoprene seal and this three gallon uh, kettle, the lid fits on here in such a way that it overlaps. So it doesn't take a whole lot of effort or a whole lot of pressure to seal this from the outside atmosphere. All you do is screw that in. And the reason why there's a wing nut on here is for your fingers. It's not for a pair of pliers. So you want to cinch this down just finger tight. 
And when it gets real resistant, then you can stop. And that's going to secure that lid on there. And it'll also seal that lid around here so there won't be any leaks. Okay, there we go. We add one, one gasket. We'll take out our other clamp. We'll add our column to the top of that. And these clamps and seals are just about universal and they last like forever. Uh, you'll n almost never have to replace them. But of course, if you need an extra seal, just let us know. We'll send you an extra gasket. Uh, you, you may lose one, you never know. But uh, they really do come in handy. All right, our bung goes in the very top. And then we'll take out our digital thermometer. And this is a digital thermometer that you can rotate the head down on either side so that you can see it. And, and again, this is for another, another video altogether is, uh, you know, where do you measure the temperature and making sure you measure it the same place each and every time. Um, there, and that goes there. So, and of course, we've got all of our hoses, our hoses for a cold water in to the bottom. And this is sort of a standard, always in at the bottom, out of the top. Just keep that in mind for all condensers, in, bottom, out, top, especially this is the torpedo or the uh, shotgun condenser. And the same thing for your reflux jacket, in at the bottom, out of the top. And that's what these hoses are for. So now, yeah, you're going to have to get yourself your own pump or use these, uh, you know, water connectors for your uh, a faucet or for your hose or for whatever the case may be. Uh, but for the money, you've got a three-gallon uh, my, a mighty mini uh, reflux, pot reflux still here that, that you can utilize for just about anything. Now, if you want to use it as a pot still, just forget these. The, this is the packing that goes in, into the column. And then do not hook up the reflux jacket. Just hook up water in, water out, and then heat your pot up to the appropriate temperature. And that is 179 degrees give or take and it all depends and, and we've discussed that in other videos as well that each still has its own personality and then you'll run that still now if you're running a reflux of course you can either use rashing rings and you can use the copper with it i'd recommend that you always use a little bit of copper inside your column uh, you can forego the rashing rings and use pennies uh, remember uh, prior to 1983 pennies were copper 99% copper, I can't remember the exact number, but they're, they're more copper than anything else. After that, they are zinc, tin, and a few other chemicals, uh, or the copper mesh. Uh, you can use marbles. Uh, you can use any other kind of medium like that. And what that allows is it allows for a surface area. First of all, the copper imparts a certain amount of flavorful values to the process in your system. The other portion of rashing rings and marbles and such uh, provide a surface area for your vapor to condense on to purify and drop out and then revaporize and rise again. Um, and that's what a reflux is. So this operating as a reflux still, your vapors would rise and they would make them their way to this top column right here into the where the jacket is. They would begin a pre-condensing, a start to cool, and they would start to drop back down through that mesh and that other medium that you have in there, whether that again is marbles or rashing rings. And then it would start to reheat and start to revaporize in the most volatile substances rising again. Now, as they start to rise again, it starts to condense and drop. Some of that vapor makes its way through the most volatile substance being the pure ethanol comes out your exhaust port through your shotgun condenser. And that's your spirits. They come out while at the same time in here, you have this constant flow up and down up and down and if you were able to take a sh picture right here in the center you would have as you'd have liquid flowing down the outside you'd have vapor rushing up the inside and that would be a reflux still in perfect balance and it would be operating like that and that constant reflux would be purifying and increasing the proof of your spirit that comes out that should be simple enough in layman's terms about exactly how a reflux still should operate. Now, here's one of the interesting things about this. With this particular still that they make at mile high, um, I also ordered this that comes with it. And this is just an option for you. Now remember, you can place this on a turkey fryer, 
a, a propane burner, any other type of, of heating element source, uh, it will work on the new wave cooktop. Uh, it works on mine anyway. Um, it, it works on any heating element that's about 1500 watts or higher. Uh, if you get it on an 1100 watt heating element, and we need to talk about electricity and watts and power and amps and volts, we could, we'll do that on another video. But if you get it on a very small one, as, a, as an example, 11 or 1300 watt, you're really overworking that thing and you may not ever get up to full temperature um, to, to run your still. So what they've developed is they've developed the 120 volt, 2000 watt heater element. Now watch this. This is what I really enjoy about this particular still. Now we're talking about a lag time of really 30 minutes or, more or less. Uh, if you're using a 2000 watt, which is a very high powered heating element, that slides right in here. Here's your gasket. And you use that same clamp that we used to take that plate off. Holds that heating element. There, now you've got a two, 120 volt, 2000 watt heating element that's going to heat this. And remember I told you that don't use anything less than a 1500 watt heater or a heating element because it's just going to take so much energy and so much time to bring that to, 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 to the proper temperature. You may be wasting your time or your effort and you may not ever get there unless you're at least at about a 1500 watt. Now this we plug right into 120 volts and we've got our heater on or we unplug it and of course the heater is off. Now there are many many options for you at this point. Uh, you could stand there and you could plug it in and unplug it and track your temperature until you get the proper temperature and you start playing that dance back and forth of plugging it in, unplugging it. You could put a switch on here. It's switching it on, switching it off, switching it on, switching it off. Just make sure that that switch is rated for the amperage pull that you're going to have on this, which is going to be somewhere around 2,000 watts divided by 120 volts. Let's do that. 2,000 divided by 120 equals 16.6 .6 amps. That's, again, information for a later discussion, but 16.6 .6 amps. So just make sure your switch is rated for at least 20 amps, a 20 amp switch. So you can switch back and forth, turning your heater element on or your heater element off. Another option for you, though, is, and this is carried by mile high as well, and this is the variable control. And there's a variable controller here, and you plug this into your variable controller, plug this into 120 volts, turn your variable controller on, and then you have minimum and maximum, just like a stove. So you're on low, you're on medium, or you're on high, or in but somewhere in between. So that way, once you get this up, I turn it on high, you get it warmed up, and when you get it near the proper temperature, start to crank it back until you get that balance of temperature, then you can fine tune it. When you get it just right, you can leave it alone and it'll, pro it'll provide the appropriate amount of, of power to that element to keep that pot at the proper temperature so you can run your still hands-free without turning it on and turning it off. Does that kind of make sense? You see, those are a couple of options you have. Um, one of the other options you have, and this is on one of our other videos, is the PID the proportional integral derivative controller that you could build yourself in a box and you put the thermocouple here in place of the uh, thermometer and once you adjust that and set it all you do is turn it on and step back and you're totally hands off at that point but those are a couple of different options for you uh, this is really really a unique small still it, you can see this is the size of it so it's not that large it's a three gallon capacity <clears throat> Excuse me, in a three gallon, your expectation, if you, and, and remember, the volume has everything to do with your process and your technique. Uh, it has very, very little to do with everything else. So your process, your technique, if you're running it correctly and you've got the proper alcohol by volume, ABV, in your mash, you can anticipate collecting probably, I don't know, maybe 
I'd go for a quart and a half, uh, about a quart and a half, maybe two quarts for three gallons. Uh, but it all depends, again, on the ABV and then your process. Remember, distilling is a wonderful, wonderful marriage between a couple of different things. One of them is hard science. The other one is just technique, experience, art, and believe it or not, in a lot of cases, just a whole lot of just dumb luck. Uh, so, hey, stay tuned, and uh, we're going to move on to the next one here, and we'll see you shortly. But in the meantime, happy distilling.